So thank you, Dennis, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Marco Marinello, and today I want to give a bit of update uh, on the building and using LibreOffice line. As you can see me, uh, I've added one uh, a picture of mine later on. Uh, next slide. So the agenda will be the Who Am I? Uh, a short story of LibreOffice Online, how I met it, uh, what I've done and, uh, about the breakup. What's building, what building online today means and why the wiki won't trick anymore. The last one standing and why it can't be good. Your versions from Collaborate Repository, some tips on how to build and on how to use then a quick group map for the future. So, who am I? I'm a freelance developer and system administrator. Uh, I was previously working uh, in Continuity, which is an Italian corporate, uh, and part of the work was also on online. I'm a computer science student at the Free University of Bolzano, a member of the Document Foundation, and was the president of the Linux user group of Bolzano, which is celebrating the 20th anniversary this year. So the short story of online, and if some of you doesn't know uh, what LibreOffice online is and the dynamics behind it. So it was announced back in 2011 with the idea of bringing uh, the LibreOffice package into a browser and have collaborative editing and so on. It was mainly developed by Collabora and it's written in C, C++, JavaScript uh, and requires running his executable on a web server. So it's not something you can just upload on a shared hosting. You pay a couple of euros a year. Uh, it requires uh, I would say a Linux host uh, running his own executable, which spins off a web server you can then proxy uh, via HA proxy, Apache, or anything you want. It's based on the WOPI protocol, uh, which was first invented and introduced by Microsoft, and it's a protocol for sharing uh, files between a uh, storage and uh, editing environment. So Sib, uh, which, as we now know, uh, was spinned off as uh, Allotropia. And by the way, it's an honor for me to speak next to uh, Torsten and the Allotropia team. And also one and one started developing and selling online. And here you have the, um, uh, the map of the organization contributing to the online repository. Uh, at CDF's infrastructure from the Kibana dashboard. Online becomes the subject of many talks. So on the wiki page of LibreOffice Online, you have a short list that will need to be integrated after the talks of LibreCon of this year. And yeah, as you can see, it was quite an interesting topic it was presented and talked about quite a while, last time in 2019, uh, was the SFS, uh, I was there since it's held in Bolzano and I live here, and was basically when I was also working on LibreOffice Online. Online is being integrated in many distributions for self-hosting and commercial products, so uh, this is also um, taken from the TDF wiki. Um, we have a list of commercial products, uh, mainly clouds, let's say, or next cloud instance, that also offer the online editing through LibreOffice Online. But on the right side, we also have softwares uh, like the Corteza Community Server or Colab that provide uh, an um, 
the executable to run your own instance of online. So you were able to have your Nextcloud instance or OnCloud or anything else and integrated with your own online server. So I said it was the 2019 when I was working on the Fuss Remote Access, which is a web application for remotely accessing files in distributed LDAP ensemble-based infrastructure, when I met the LibreOffice Online. So the integration with Online Editing was pretty interesting. And it turned out uh, there were almost no documentation on how to build it. And the wiki page was more commercial. So there was um, the, the lists we have saw before regarding the providers. Uh, there was a short story on how the uh, online uh, project was started, but there is there was no indication uh, on how to build it. And vendor provided Docker images came with limitation of concurrent users. So um, the pre-built images uh, that were published on the Docker Hub or anywhere else came with a limit of concurrent user that uh, could use that and uh, after the, the, that limit was reached, uh, the N plus one user would just get a message, uh, uh, the limit is over by a license. And um, I had the pleasure to talk with uh, Michael Max yesterday actually uh, about online. And he told me uh, his limitation was removed. It's kind of uh, um, a really good news. But back in that time, there was this problem. So I started working on a reliable way to build online and wrote appropriate documentation about it. This Elton and Docker nightly script was already there and did almost anything we needed. So starting from scratch, uh, was going to clone down the core and online repository on the branch you want build it and then generate a docker image it just needed to be expanded a little bit for example adding support for different host os so back in time there was only one docker file which is which was for ubuntu and if you were if you were building on debian and then just copying the installation during side ubuntu container this wouldn't have worked, of course. So one of the things we have made uh, was provide different Docker files so that the script can autonomously decide which one to use depending on your um, host system. A new page in the wiki targeting only how to build online and many members contributed to it. So now in the TDFs wiki, you can find uh, a page which is named building online which is entirely on how to build and which flex to set and so on there are also other pages for the reverse proxy for example that, that were not quite finished so yeah this is one of um, the things done that are really done so the breakup <laughs> Shortly after the release of LibreOffice 7, Collabora announces they will fork online and stops contributing upstream. Quite disappointing, I know. So they basically forked the online repository at the point it was the town time, uh, moved it on GitHub, and simply stopped uh, uh, pushing their commits back on the TDF infrastructure. So building online today, the repo at TDF is still readable, but only that, it's in read only, since the board of directors decide to read it. And of course, it's outdated. So since nobody can write there, the last push is almost a year ago, and it misses the security updates. 
So why the wiki won't do the trick anymore? Uh, yes, if you watch and check the PDF wiki and try to build uh, against the fork, you will have some issues. And these issues are mainly that they change the structure. So uh, as the Docker uh, folder previously was containing the scripts to just compile down the entire stuff, uh, now there are two different subfolders uh, from packages and from source. Uh, the first one provides uh, uh, an easy way to build the Docker image by just uh, uh, downloading the build artifacts from Collabora repository. So the Debian packages, install them into the container, load the, the license key, and you go. And from source, it's basically what was um, the Docker folder before. And the variables. So there was this renaming. Uh, as you can notice, the no Docker push variable of the script uh, has been dropped. And the other have mainly been replaced from LibreOffice to Collabora. Yeah, it has been stated in the past, it's not the best practice, of course. Uh, this is a patch set, it's available on Garrett, it will be linked uh, in the presentation. Uh, changing the variables, it's uh, quite disappointing, as pointed out by Samuel. Uh, changing variable names breaks scripts and documentation. So the documentation that it's a TDF's wiki it's outdated and provides uh, wrong names, uh, despite the Collabora branch and fork. The last one standing, targeting with the one that is the latest version you can build from the read-only repository of the Document Foundation, which will be based on the LibreOffice 7.0 branch and 7.0.6 of the core. But you should not do that. Here's why. It ships with known common vulnerabilities exposures that would require backporting the fixes. And you can do that since the repo is frozen. So some common vulnerabilities exposures were discovered uh, after the fork and they have of course been fixed in the Collabora repository but there is no chance to get those fixes back into the office infrastructure since the repo is frozen. So the only way would be to fork the repository on your own and back for those fixes, but this won't be um, an improvement since it will just be another fork. And the same applies for the compiler. So ZCC version greater of eight, 3.0 requires backporting patches. So uh, trying to compile on Debian 11 will just give you a bunch of errors, uh, even if you give all the possible disable warning flags, uh, you'll still have issues. And again, the only way to fix them is to backport the patches. But you can still compile versions from the Labora fork. Uh, the script is now the docker from source build.sh and will default to this Collabora CP64 branch for the core of LibreOffice and for the master uh, for to the master for online, which up to this night doesn't compile, but you can use the distro Collabora CX64, which is the stable version. And you can always refer to the GitHub releases uh, uh, to check out which is the latest stable. If you want, you can, of course, also download the uh, releases from GitHub and compile from there if you want to avoid uh, stuff with Git going on. And talking about Git, uh, if you care about if your time, use the GitHub read only mirror because uh, Git at LibreOffice 
if you have to clone down uh, uh, almost uh, four or five gigabytes of the uh, core repository uh, would take literally forever so at least from github you can uh, get a satisfying download speed and of course for both online and core you see cache if you don't want to compile it from zero every time and set it up properly so set a cache size that is appropriate so five or ten gigabytes and keep in mind that building will require many hours uh, in my experience more than five on a 12 core Xeon with 16 gigabytes of RAM now the most interesting part so using online uh, how can you nowadays use online so the wiki contains a short list of known integrations and are all marked as official and un as unofficial sorry since are not released by the document foundation itself and as mentioning nextcloud is one of the strongest integration we can notice but there is also a Moodle plugin, uh, which is quite interesting in my opinion, allows you to um, collaboratively edit documents with the students or allow them to uh, submit an assignment uh, using the online editor. There are also own cloud and much most integration that we know, but nobody up to now reported, uh, they tested it and brought it down in the wiki. So as mentioned before, online uses the WOPI protocol. It can be integrated in any application that is already integrated with Office 365 or other WOPI based online editors. And remember to double check the app stores for commercial names. So as said, uh, many times you will find uh, um, the app to integrate uh, LibreOffice Online into another software released as a, with a commercial name. So, for example, Collabora Online. Uh, this also applies to Moodle. Also, the Moodle plugin uh, is named Collabora Online. You shouldn't be afraid of that since normal operations will hide the commercial name of the app from the end user and override them with the compile time flex. So once you have opened the online editor under the help menu info, you will find uh, the string you have specified in build time. So should really not be a problem. Now, last but not least, a roadmap for the future for everyone, for me, for you from TDF and so on. Update the wiki from an historical point of view. So the wiki is now stuck with this procedure on how to build online, but there's nothing about the fact that the repository at TDF is frozen and there has been a fork and so on. So someone should take a final decision on the frozen repository and the documentation. So if online is still a project of TDF, it makes sense to me to maintain the repository and the wiki, but if it's not, maybe we should just drop them. While waiting for WASM and this is the reason, of course, it was a pleasure for me to talk after Allotropia. Use online in second time, hopefully we'll be able to migrate to WASP. Build it yourself, yeah, if you have time to invest in, in it, and, uh, mainly a computer to dedicate to it. It's of course way funnier. And you can take the chance to use the customization flags, which will be with a name and with a branding that this is also documented in the TDF wiki page. Be creative, 
So life needs creativity, so be creative. And don't forget to contribute to the project. One thing I noticed, it's that the Docker file is broken at the moment uh, due to the switch of master from stable to stable and a missing library in, uh, in both size. So just find yourself something to do and do it. Thank you so much. Sorry, I've got two minutes out of my time. Uh, but if we can, I'll be answering any question. Thank you again.